David, I'm going to pass it over to you. We have a special guest with us today, Sherilyn Delgado, one of the BD support heroes um, here with the family. So uh, you guys wanted to cover the Google Maps API setup. Um, and just before we dive into it, I just want to say most people might already have this uh, taken care of their, on their sites, but we have a lot of new people who signed up and started their BD sites. And this is just some good troubleshooting ideas for when things may not be working with the Google Maps API as well. Yeah, setting up the Google Maps API is one of the kind of first steps that we recommend when setting up a new Brilliant Directories website. And once you do that, it's kind of a set it and forget it kind of thing. The only other time you should really need to go back in and maybe adjust something is if you ever update your domain name. But other than that, once you have it set up, you should be able to just uh, just leave it as is. But as Jason mentioned, we have had a lot of new users sign up recently. So we did want to go over some, um, some kind of troubleshooting tips because it is a, a multi-step process to, uh, to enable the Google, Google Maps API. And although it has gotten easier over the years, some people still do run into various problems when setting it up. So we wanted to give you the best practices for if you do have any issues, what steps uh, you should go through to troubleshoot it, what we can do to help you out and what resources we have available to hopefully help you troubleshoot whatever issues you may be uh, encountering. So uh, Sherilyn, will, uh, she's uh, on our support team. I'm sure some of you have already interacted with her a little bit if you've ever submitted a, a support inquiry, but Sherilyn will go through those best practices for troubleshooting the Google Maps API. Hey guys, I hope everybody's doing good. Yeah, so we're just gonna dive into some of these topics. Um, so the first one, you know, the first topic we're diving into is what does the Google Maps enable for your site? So this unlocks a lot of functionality. We're just going to quickly read over these and then I'm going to jump over to the demo site and we can show some of these live. So a lot of the benefits is assigning latitude and longitude locations to all of your member profiles and your member posts, such as job listings and classifieds all of the location-based searches that the members can conduct. Uh, we have all of these fun Google Maps with pins. They're very interactive. This also helps with all of the lead matching. You know, when a visitor comes in and submits a lead, it matches them automatically to the member, you know, within the location specified. We have add-ons that use this functionality. So I'm gonna go ahead and demonstrate some of it on our demo site. Awesome, yeah, let me pass the presenter role to you. All right, perfect. Okay. Yep. So like I was saying, so members can conduct location searches, you know, based on where they are, what they're looking for. Very interactive. You have the drop down suggestions and these sidebars are available throughout all of your site and sidebars in the header mini navs. Uh, we mentioned how you can assign locations to all of your members. So this is very beneficial when they're coming up in all of the search results. And for the posts as well, as you can see, you can assign specific locations. And we mentioned the fun interactive maps with the pins. For example, once the location has been assigned to the post, in this case, a classified, we have this uh, fun sidebar widget that displays the location. You can zoom in, zoom out. Same thing for all of your member results. We have the map view option. It provides a lot of information as well. Here we have like the member profile, their names, and um, yeah, it's, it works exactly like Google Maps does. You know, you can zoom in. Um, it gives you all of you know the accurate locations, so it's really beneficial. So this is just like the basic functionality, and it's available for all, all of your site. Anywhere you see a location, this is what we use the API key for. You had a good point there. If you go back to the list view also, when you're doing a location-based search, it'll actually show you how far a member is from the, the center of, of what was searched. Um, so the, the member, we know their lot, latitude and longitude, and we know what the visitor is attempting to search for. Uh, so it's really good to see that. And then when a member, there's a, there's a feature where members can be listed in all locations. It doesn't matter what their address is. Maybe they provide services globally or nationwide. Uh, they do have the serves your area um, tag as well there. So uh, yeah, lots of good information, but all this is powered by uh, the Google Maps API being connected to, to the site. All right, so yeah, Google Maps API does a lot on the BD sites. 
and it's really important. Here's an important one, where to find documentation. Yes, yeah, so we've made sure to, um, you know, have all of this documentation that we've made available to you guys, you know, within our support center. Um, and we'll go ahead and visit the support center in just a minute here. So you guys can access that using that link. Perfect, yes, exactly. So this is where you can find all of the documentation that, you know, we work very hard to keep up to date and um, include anything that you might need for Google Maps and everything else on the site. So we also have that search bar, you know, you can type in Google Maps and it'll, you know, bring up all of the articles within the documentation center so that if you know what you're looking for, you can just type that in and find it. If not, we have um, one main guide article, which is how to set up your API key for the first time. And usually this is the only article you need to go through. It's got, um, I believe it's 12 or 14 very detailed steps as to you know what you need to do step by step with screenshots. So for example, in the first step, we have the link that we provide for you guys to go ahead and set this up. Once you click on this link, um, you click the get started button. It uh, sets up your account for you, fill it in with your information. Um, we're gonna jump over to step four. Because step three is just filling out the account. So step four is um, very important because this is where you're enabling the APIs. And these specific APIs um, all have very specific functions on your site that are very necessary. We have the maps, the routes, and the places. So once you select all three of these, we can go ahead and you know, click next, save them. And then you know, you'll have a few more windows, just some quick surveys. You, know, you answer those according to your needs. And then the next very important step is going to be step nine where we set up the domains that this key is able to access so there's really three that you need to add you know the directory up if your site is not live yet um, you know we need the manage my directory uh, referrer as well because this gives access to the key to all of the back end of your site when you're searching for members if you're matching leads so that's what this one is for. And then the third example here is um, in the article, it's I Love Brilliant, but you're not gonna be including I Love Brilliant, it's going to be your live domain name at the end. So this is really important. And then once you set this up, you go ahead and save your changes, and then you need to um, paste your key within the general settings, the integration tab. So what's really fun is like once you've set this up and you click save, everything's pasted, there's a really great way within the admin dashboard to check and make sure that the setup has been properly you know, integrated to your site. So if you scroll down to where it says website resources, it'll give you the status of the key on your site. So for example, your API key is working. Like David said, you know, you've done it, you forget it, you've only had to set it up once, the setup was perfect. But if you come here, you check it and it's red, it's giving you an error. We do have a very handy folder with all of the troubleshooting steps that you, you know, possibly need for the site. Um, if you go back to the documentation center, exactly, if you type in Google Maps, for example, the issues, this one specifically for billing errors, you can use the breadcrumbs and we can go directly to the folder for the Google Maps troubleshooting. And this one has six articles total. And within these six articles, we break it up into the six most common you know, troubleshooting steps. Missing an API, uh, you changed your domain, so now you need to edit that again. If you have any billing errors. And we have uh, two very important articles for those um, site owners that don't really wanna use this or hope to reduce costs. We have one for reducing usage and costs, which still allows the maps to be enabled on your site but it cuts down the amount that the API is called. And then we also have another article for completely removing that functionality, which we do recommend, you know, you get a little help from that. Yeah, it can be a little technical and advanced, but we do provide all of the steps with screenshots so that you can achieve this on your site, you know, if this is something you'd like to do. And then lastly, we have one for verifying your domain. This is something that um, Google requires, they just want to make sure you're setting up a key for a site that is actually yours. So all of these are available to you guys if and when you know you do run into any problems. 
but as we stated, you know, the majority of the time you set it up once and it just continues to work automatically on its own. And I don't want to sugarcoat this, guys. Setting up these Google Maps is a big pain in the butt. I've actually checked out other platforms uh, such as Shopify to see what their process is for connecting the Google Maps API to, you know, such a such a large company like Shopify. It's the same steps. Uh, you need to manually go there. So we're, we've done our best to kind of document it. Um, you know, videos are a little tough because Google kind of changes the flow sometimes. The logic is still there, the, the, everything is still there, but they kind of, and, the, and the videos become outdated so quickly, it's just easier to keep uh, written documentation with screenshots up to date. So I'm in the same boat as you guys that this is way too many steps sometimes. Uh, but the good news is, is usually once you set it up once um, and it's working on your site, it should continue to stay working uh, for, I haven't, I haven't seen anyone have any issues after they've successfully set it up uh, the first time. Um, but just in case you do, I think you put some tips here for us, Sherilyn, about some of the most common yeah. issues to troubleshoot. And you've already mentioned uh, a few of them, but this is the dreaded, oops, something went wrong message that's associated <laughs> yeah. with, with the Google Maps uh, when, when the API is not connected correctly, correct? Yes, yes. So we'll, uh, I've seen this many times, and um, like we said, you know, luckily it's, it's not too difficult to fix. So we're just gonna wrap this up and talk about all the common issues and where we can find all of this documentation exactly. So um, something I do want to bring up, some, one specific thing to make sure is always make sure you're logged into the correct Google account that you use to set up the key. I know sometimes you know we have multiple accounts, some business, some personal. So when we're going in to check all of the you know, APIs or we're following some of these instructions, just making sure that you are using the correct account always saves a lot of time, a lot of headache. So that's always my biggest recommendation. The second is making sure that all of the APIs are properly set up on your site within the API. We have an article going over how to fix this and it's for the three main APIs, which is the places, the geocoding, and the maps JavaScript. But all of this information is in the article, so it makes it really easy to follow along. The third tip we have is to make sure you have a valid billing account. Just to chime in real quick uh, regarding the billing account, some people don't realize that when you do sign up to uh, create a Google Maps API with Google, they do require you to have a credit card on file. Google started requiring this, I think, close to two years ago now, um, but they do still provide, I think it's up to $200 in monthly credits. And that credit typically does cover any cost you may incur by using the Google Maps API on your website. If Google does start to charge you for your usage, if you do exceed the credits that they provide you, then that typically means your website's generating uh, enough traffic where you're generating enough revenue from your members where whatever amount they may charge you for utilizing the API, uh, it's most likely negligible. So although you do need to have a credit card on file, the vast majority of Brilliant Directory's websites won't be charged for utilizing it. Exactly, yeah, and if you are worried about the cost for your website, we do have those two articles we mentioned, the one about reducing costs, or just altogether removing the functionality if that's the direction you'd like to take the site in. Fourth you know, tip we have is making sure that the domain names are correct within the key, like David mentioned earlier. If you decide to change your domain later on, take your website in another direction, this is one of um, the main steps that you'd have to complete again, which is just updating the domains, which is a two minute process, and we have step-by-step -step instructions for this too. Sorry to interrupt, just wanna to touch on the domain thing. So part of the, part of the ways Google protects your resource usage is because you're the account owner, you, you tell Google, I only want my API key to work on these domain names. So if someone gets your private API key and wants to use it on their site, um, you know, or, or again, just some other nefarious activity, that's the reason to have the correct domain name associated with the Google Maps API um, account. So if you do, as Sherilyn was saying, if you do change your domain name or maybe you do have all the setup when you have your staging URL, the directory up.com URL, uh, just remember later to add additional domains that you want to have that API key work for um, as well. And you don't necessarily need to create additional API keys for different domains and website properties that you own. Um, you could just create one API key 
Um, and as long as if it's okay that all the billing or usage is mixed together, you don't really need to go through all the steps. Uh, you can just whitelist and add those additional domain names um, as an HTTP, HTTP refer uh, in, in that list there for you. Exactly. Yeah, Google's really good about you know making sure that everything's secure on their end. Um, and yeah, just make sure that you have the correct API key pasted over into your site. If you're not sure where to find that, you can always reach out to us. And then lastly, we have one pro tip. If you're just running into issues with your key, you've gone through all of the steps, sometimes it is just easier to start over and create the key all over again. Because sometimes this is an issue on Google's side with the setup. And just recreating the process starting over again, it's successful 99% of the time. Or if you're not sure how to do this by yourself, you can please go ahead and send us a ticket. We're always super happy to help. And um, we'll get this back up and running on your site in no time. And Eric asked a really good question. He said he's had his site hosted with Brilliant Directories for six years now. And would there ever be a time where he would need to go in and double check to make sure all the settings are up to date? Uh, typically, no. The only time you should need to do that is if for whatever reason you notice on the front end of your site you're running into that uh, like a little error when trying to put in an address for a location-based search or you, you notice the maps aren't loading for some reason. You can then go into your admin dashboard, see what the status of the Google Maps API is, and then if it's not functioning properly, then you can go through these troubleshooting steps. But other than that, you should never really need to go back into the, the Google account and make sure that all the settings are up to date. Yeah, that's correct. Like these keys are very self-sufficient. Once you've set it up, it runs and we don't really make very many changes to this. So it's a one-time setup. And once it's good to go on your site, you don't have to worry about it ever again. Awesome. Thank you so much for that great presentation. Uh, I actually learned a lot uh, from, from you putting this together, like exactly what the maps and the Places API are for. Uh, I'm sure people will have some more questions, uh, but thank you for this. Uh, it's definitely going to be useful for people trying to get this set up for the first time.